you know, rock stacks used to be used at the junction points of different trails or roads. Right. To, it's called a herm, so it sing, sing, signifies you can move into a different dimension. <laughs> Throughout history, natives were far more tuned to nature. I mean, they would talk to plants just like me and you were talking in trees and had a deep connected relationship to all the animals, birds. They were a family to them. That was one that he did himself. This is called warming up. Warming up. <laughs> I, saw, I saw you had a group of people um, on, on, was it one of your uh, workshops or something? You had a big group yeah. of eight or nine? I've had uh, 60 people in here. Really? A couple of times, yeah, 50, 40, 60. Yeah, people really enjoy it. I teach different types of rock workshops oriented towards different themes, so, so the same person can end up coming to three different workshops just to get different techniques. Right. There can't be many people that teach how to stack rocks, is there? No, not that I know of. <laughs> It's funny, there's a place we go to in Portugal. We, we've got a sort of family home there. Uh -huh. And um, and, it, and this seems to be like a, I don't know, it's just a thing there. Like you go out the beach and there's just literally, as, as far as you can see, people do do these different, they're not as big as this stuff. Uh -huh. Some of them are reasonable size, but there's all different types of rock stacking. I don't know yeah. why Portugal, but. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's pretty deep in our human psyche. You know, rock stacks used to be used at the junction points of different trails or roads right to it's called a herm so it sing, sing, signifies you can move into a different dimension all right <laughs> um, rock stacks were used throughout antiquity by natives to mark burial sites and to mark hunting territories to say don't come in here it's ours um, there's a, a whole bunch of actual ceremonial and like symbolic uses of them throughout history. I guess Stonehenge in England is like, I don't know whether it's anything like this, but that's like a big, they're like in huge yeah, rocks. Yeah, that's there. actually tuned to um, key, I can't key remember. Key stones which, or something. It's tuned specifically to one of the constellations in the zodiac directly above it. And that's, I think it's really um, more like a, device for potentially reading the stars. All right. There's a variety of theories on what it is, but to me it looks like a star compass. Right. It could be a, also a, a giant um, attractor and, and producer of life force energy that tunes into cosmic frequencies and fills the earth with the energy. Because really? you can do that with stones as well. Oh. Yeah, like those act like acupuncture needles, so they're drawing cosmic energy right into the earth there but they're also releasing it too. And what is that, what, what effect does that have on the earth then? Um, well, if energy's low, like say you got a area in a garden that's bogged down and low, I could use a stone stack to draw energy out of the atmosphere into the earth and enliven the soil, mm. or I could make a circle and that'll enclose more life force energy and help anything in the circle grow. So for as long as humans have been farming and gardening, I commonly would put circles of stone, for example, around trees because it increases the life force oh, energy right. in the earth and in the tree. I like these colored ones. And how do people know, like, whether it worked, how, the, how to lay them out then? Is that just things that they figure out or is it? How do, how do they people figure out like, Oh, they energy. can feel the energy, really. Oh, you just feel the energy. That's part of why I do it, because everything you create, the energy changes, just like when you paint. Every line and every color changes the vibration that the painting's sending out. So I'm very sensitive when I'm painting to what it is that I'm creating, because it's going to affect me and anybody that looks at it. Right. So it's really like medicine that's in the form of art. But throughout history natives were far more tuned to nature i mean they would talk to plants just like me and you were talking in trees and had a deep connected relationship to all the animals birds they were a family to them so you know they didn't watch tv they watched all the creatures yeah and they had to learn them so they don't get killed 
Uh, and is that something you've developed as a, or have you always had that that sort yeah. of like ability to sense those energies? Well, I think growing up on a farm and kind of out, you know, in a more of a wild environment than most people on Vancouver Island is where I grew up. Um, I was so exposed to the natural forces and being on a farm and raising animals and plants and it, it just becomes sort of a natural way to, you, what happens is you don't realize what you're feeling until you go away and it's gone. Right. And you go, oh my God, this place feels dead compared to home. Like, there's nothing coming out of the ground. Then you start realizing by contrast that there's a lot of life force energy in the environment and then you feel where it's missing. I lived in England in sort of quite, a, I guess, a farm area and then I moved out here near the, ocean we're pretty close to it and whenever you go there it, I don't know whether it's like a just a mental thing or whether it really does feel different but you whenever I go running you know like if, it, if it's been a tough day or whatever you go go along the beach and watch the ocean it seems to kind of have this real calming effect so is it is there energy with the ocean and yes, that as well uh, the ocean emits negative ions which help calm and balance our body so people that have emotional stress or high stress levels often feel significant relief being next to the ocean, plus the rhythm of the ocean harmonizes our biorhythms mm. because we're very sensitive to the same energies that make the ocean move, make our waters move. Oh, right. So when we get next to the ocean, being in the presence of that can actually bring us down into harmony with the greater surroundings instead of being caught off in our drama so much. Yeah, yeah. So it acts like a almost like a rebooting a computer to get everything to synchronize again. I felt that, but I didn't realize whether it was just... Oh, shit, I was about to throw that stone near <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm like, oh, I might hit him. <laughs> I thought you were going that way. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. That's what happens out here. That's why you always got to be paying attention. <laughs> Paul was telling me, like, you don't need to wear shoes because it's going to go through shoes or anything anyway, so barefoot's just as good. Just don't drop it on your toes. <laughs> well, not only that, you want to <laughs> let your feet learn to have their natural connection to the earth because your feet read the earth. That's how your feet know what to do faster than your brain can figure it out. And because you have to do very tricky maneuvers with heavy stones, often in precarious situations where you're balancing on a rock that's moving, um, your, your feet have to be very smart and very fast. You can't have lazy feet or you can't move quick enough or you don't know how to use your toes to hold you to things. So if you wear shoes, it takes all that out. And when you're barefoot, you got to ground. So all the stress, whether it be electromagnetic pollution, whatever, can flow down into the earth. It drains the stress out of you. Mm -hmm. So when people don't get their feet on the earth, they start winding up inside. And that's ultimately can cause a lot of people to have anxiety, but they don't realize it's because they're like a, you know, when you take a sweater out of a dryer, how it can shock you. Mm. They're full of this charge and it's winding the whole system up. Like just um, like someone uh, sitting at a uh, <laughs> intersection with revving their engine right. up real fast, you know, like, okay, what are you going to do here? Waste some more gas? What are the blues? What are the kind of greeny stones? What are those? Those are... Those are Oro Verde, Oro Verde. They're, I love them because they're crystals, so they amplify any subtle energies quite a lot. And they're tuned to the heart chakra, which I love. They're just quite expensive. They're 800 bucks a ton, which is a pallet four feet by four feet by four feet. Oh, so not very big. <laughs> no, yeah, I've got a, several thousand dollars worth of them. <laughs> Because they were really important when I built my water charger. Are they easy to, to get hold of those? Yeah, you yeah. can. Most, uh, you know, most stone yards or uh, like KRC Rock is one that's up in LA. That time of day. You want to hit Matthew's got some pot in it. Go on then. Made with love. <laughs> is it as good as the potatoes? Though? That's right. Well, <laughs> that, that's a high mark. Those are some good potatoes. They're pretty good. When people's feet get old, their body gets old. Really? Yeah. You can tell what's going on anywhere in a person's body from their feet. <laughs> and the hands, and the ears, and the tongue. Yeah? Yeah, they all have maps of the whole body in them. What do you look for in the, what do you look at on the ears then? Well, there's key points that will get sensitive or change their electrical flow. Acupuncture points, 
So if you assess those points, you can feel what would actually be measured on a voltmeter as change in resistance. But to the sensitive enough practitioner, it feels like the change in the flow of chi, life force energy. Imagine, just like you can feel water moving through a hose if you squeeze it, but it's much yeah. more subtle. It has a similar presence to it. Um, but it's really like a bioelectrical field. It's more like smooth electricity, almost like a DC electricity, where it flows smoothly, not oscillating like AC. Um, so if you know where to go, you can touch the points. And when an organ is depressed, then the energy will be down. If an over organ's overexcited, the energy will be very hot. They're like really excited. Hmm. So using the right points and the right techniques, you can balance the energy from the tongue, the ears, the hands, or the feet. Huh. There's whole systems based on each of those locations. One more. <clears throat> I can't help feeling I should be moving some rocks now. Probably. That way it won't hurt so bad to sit in your car while you drive. These things are heavier than I thought. Gee. Remember the rule, never rush on a rock guard. <laughs> Always be alert. <clears throat> they look really small, but they're they're actually quite heavy. <laughs> okay. That's what I call foreplay. Honestly, that's what I call it, because you got to work with it till you find the surface that bites, you know? Okay. So you're getting close, but you don't want any of that wiggle in there, or each stone you go up, it magnifies it. Like I say, you may have to flip it over to see if the other side works. you got, you got to keep moving it around till you realize that it's not a fit. I should imagine this is like quite de-stressing when you I could quite enjoy doing this actually just by doing a few like just get just forgetting about everything and trying not to not only that you'll see because you never do the same thing twice <laughs> your whole core system has to turn on if you're doing a fixed pattern in the gym, yeah. like a deadlift there's certain muscles that you need more than others some that are hardly involved they're just in the background but with this, because every movement's new and they can yeah. get tricky, the whole system gets turned on. All right. So when you leave, you feel like somebody's tuned you up. <laughs> like everything's turned on but balanced. Yeah. Because you can't function out here without balancing the system. In the gym, there's lots of ways to go on a leg press. Doesn't matter how much you're lifting. You're not balancing the system. So all that's, that's the stabilizer system. Right. It's getting shut off while prime movers are getting stronger. It's like putting a bigger and bigger engine in a car, but leaving the same brakes on it. Yeah. Good way to die. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> <It'd be hard work. laughs> we spent sometimes half an hour trying to get one stone to figure out how to love its neighbor. Ready? to change this one. That's not... Do you, do you sort of like get them up and then end up having to take a bunch down because you sort of not quite got a previous one? It depends. Uh, well, you probably don't, but... As you practice, <laughs> you know what's going to work and not. <laughs> so you generally just... Don't do it if it's not going to work. Right. If you've had enough practice, you know where the edges of your story are. <laughs> there's a thing called reality, and then there's the dream. <laughs> and they find a place that where they meet or don't.
I bet you this is good for kids. Well, a bit dangerous, I suppose, but. Well, the girls, they both just play and have a great time. They come out here with their electric cars and do laps, and then they'll lift rocks for a while. Yeah. Yeah, my kids are like this. Yeah, it's fun. Backyard, just buy some rocks and stuff. I don't know whether that one's a bit too ambitious. Or oh, maybe not. My toes are numb. <laughs> no, that's not going to work. I want something to finish it off, like a kind of star on a Christmas tree thing. Ta -da. There you go, Paul, what do you think? I like it. It's my, it's my kind of like little, little mini dinosaur thing. I enjoyed that. I could, I could see myself getting into it, you know? Oh, yeah. If I had a little stone garden, it's physical, logical, creative, all together in one. You have to have coordination. You have to have stability, strength, power, endurance, speed, balance, <laughs> and agility. That's all the biomotor abilities. <laughs> you have to have everything pretty much that a gymnast has to have to do this at your best. It's such a simple, primal activity that, that lets you have a relationship with Mother Earth. So you, you get connected to the elements again, you know, you take yourself out of this cloud of mind all the time. And you just feel your whole body relaxing because this is its home, you know? Right. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Mm -hmm.